Okay, we're going to be starting the second part of the logarithmic videos. Uh, in our last video, we talked about the definition of a logarithm and how to solve for them. And then we also talked about common logarithms, where, I'll just make a side note here, if we just write log, like this example right here, and there's no base, this is known as a common logarithm, and the base is 10. Even though it's not written, you take the base as 10. And then we looked at the natural logarithm, where it's written as ln, so it's written a bit differently, but essentially what it means is that you have a log with the base of e. And e is just the number that equals 2.718. And we did an example, if we take ln of e, well that's the same thing of, as having log base e of e. And we know when the argument and the base are the same, the, the answer to the logarithm is 1. Alright, because e to the power of what is equal to itself? Well, it has to be 1. Alright, to finish off logarithms, I want to go over logs of 0 and negative numbers. And then I want to graph the, the function of y is equal to x, log of x. And then where are logs used? So let's get started. First off, the log of 0. So if we take our common log, and we take the log of 0, remember common log base 10, okay? I'll stop saying it now, but hopefully that's sunk into your guys' brain. <laughs> so we take 10 of x is equal to 0, and we ask ourselves, 10 to what power is going to give us 0? Well, you can try every real number, even negative numbers, all the real, real numbers, and you'll find that there is no power that will give us 0. And therefore, log of 0 is undefined. Okay? There is no solution. Okay? Log of 0 does not does not equal zero. Okay, and that's a big mistake. People are going to see zero, and it's not like math where it's like times zero and oh, everything is zero as soon as you see a zero. Okay, that's a big and common mistake that people see, or I see every day. People do log zero and they think it equals zero. No, we just did the math here, and there is no exponent x that when we take 10 to the power of x that will give us 0 so it is undefined it is not 0 it is undefined okay very important now let's do negative numbers okay and just a note this is for any log okay you could have ln of 0 okay and it gives us the same thing because it's going to be e to the x is equal to 0 e is just a number and there is no power that will make this equal to zero okay so still undefined I'll call it UD uh, negative numbers so let's take log and we'll do base 2 just to change things up a bit uh, log 2 of minus 2 alright so when we do this we take the base and base to the power of an exponent is equal to the argument and we ask ourselves, what power will make 2 equal minus 2? And the answer is there is none. Okay, there is no power, there is no x that will make 2 equal minus 2. Whenever you take a power, it has to equal 1 or greater. And therefore, this log is also undefined. Okay? It is not 0, it is undefined. All right, that goes for any number, any negative number, and any base. It doesn't matter what the base is. If the argument, if the argument, this is a theorem, I guess. If the argument is less than or equal to zero, then the logarithm I'll just write the log does not 
or it's it's undefined undefined all right important to remember and I know we did it in the last video but just a reminder uh, the log of 1 okay so this is base 10 to the power of what is equal to 1 and this is 10 to the 0 gives 1 any number to the 0 always gives us 1 so whenever you see log of 1 you know this is 0 or Sorry, yeah, this is zero. The log of one is equal to zero. All right, so, and remember, <laughs> don't get these two confused, don't get these two mixed up, okay? When, when there's a log of one, whenever you just see one, it, it, it's equal to zero, it's not undefined. Hope that didn't confuse you right there, but th this is something important too, because you might have like a really complicated logarithm, but then the argument is just one and then everything equals to zero and you could have I don't know x squared minus e to the x squared <laughs> divided by four five pi something like that you have like this crazy thing maybe it's not that crazy but and then you have log of one and you're like oh my gosh what am I going to do? But then you're like, oh, the log of 1 is equal to 0. So this whole thing is equal to 0. And you're like, oh, good, I'm safe. And you feel so much better. And <laughs> you continue. Okay, so now that we went over that, I want to graph our... Um, I want to graph y is equal to log of x in the xy plane. So we're going to make a chart of x and y points and I want to do x is equal to 1, 10, 1 tenths, 1 one hundredths. Okay? And we're going to find all the values of y for this. So when we do that, we're going to have, uh, so do the first one. So log of 1 is equal to what? Well, if you remember, we just did it. This is the common logarithm, so base 10 to um, the power of y is equal to 1. So y has to equal to 0, right? So y is 0. Now if we do the next one, log of 10, well we have 10, the base 10 to the power y is equal to 10. Well we have to make it equal itself, so y has to equal to 1, right? So y is 1. Now if we take the log of 1 tenth, well we have the base to the power of y is equal to 1 tenth. Well, 10 to the minus 1 is the same thing as 1 to the 10th, so we know that y is equal to minus 1. And then if we take log of 1 one hundredths, this is 10 to the y is equal to 1 one hundredths. And then we know if we take 10 to the minus 2, this is the same thing as 1 over 10 squared, which is the same thing as 1 one hundredths. So we know that this is minus 2. So now we have four points, and we're going to graph this on our plot, okay? So, or plot this on our graph. So we have x is equal to 1, so we'll have that here, and y is equal to 0, so there's a point there. We have x is 10, so let's just say way over here, and y is equal to 1, so just a bit up. And then we have 1 tenth y is minus 1, so say this is 1, this is minus 1, and we have 1 tenth, so that's going to be like right about here, and then we have minus 2, y is minus 2, and x is 1 one hundred. So this is getting very close to 0, so it's going to be very close to that axis, and basically this just makes a curve. This continues on forever and this continues down here forever. Alright, so important things to notice is that you will always have the point 1, 0, no matter what. Okay, because whenever you take the log of 1, no matter what the base is, you're always going to get 0. So 1 and 0 will always be there. Now, this, I took 10, 
because our base is 10, all right? But if I had, let's say, ln, then this is log of e, right? So I would have taken our x point to be e instead, which would still give us 1, okay? So y is always going to be 1 at our second point here, but our x is going to be the base value, okay? So you always want to take that point where the base value, where you have a point where it's the base value and y is equal to 1, so b and 1, okay? And then these are just random points to show you this part. And what I want you guys to know about this part is that remember what we were just doing? How we said log of 0 is undefined and log of minus 2 is undefined, negative numbers and 0 is undefined? Well, if you look at our graph, it uh, confirms that because I know it's, it looks like it's touching, but it's just a big marker, you know? But our graph actually never touches x is equal to 0. And there is no part of our graph that is in the negative numbers here, okay? It is all undefined and that's why our graph does not go there. And that proves that negative numbers, if the argument is less or equal to 0, then the log is undefined, okay? And you'll see, like, as we go along with x values, y is becoming negative, but log x is just approaching 0. It gets closer and closer to 0, therefore y is an asymptote. And I think that's pretty clear. If it's not, just write a comment and I'll try to make it clear. But uh, the video is getting a bit long, so I just want to finish. Uh, where are logarithms used? Okay, logarithms, it's a bit, you might not understand now because you to understand you have to know the properties of logarithms and I'll make videos on that. But essentially it was easier to use logarithms to do calculations like 5874.6 or 52 times 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5.71. Okay, to do this multiplication it would take a lot of work. We can do it but it takes a lot of work. But if you use logarithms and I know it might not make sense now, but back when they invented logarithms in the 1500s or whenever it was, and they didn't have calculators or computers to do this, it was actually easier to lo use logarithms. And that's where it initially came from. But nowadays, because we have computers and such, they're not used as much, but we're also dealing with larger numbers. Like in astronomy, they deal with huge numbers, so you can still find logarithms and applications like chemistry, astronomy, and engineering just because they have such large numbers. But also where you'll see it more, like if you don't go into a field where it's all sciencey or whatever, logarithmic scales are quite common. And like in our xy plane, usually you see one, two, three, four. Okay, it goes up by one each time. But in a logarithmic scale, all it means is that uh, you're going to go up by times 10 each time. So this is 10. This is 100. So from here to here you did times 10. And from here to here the next one times 10 will be 1000. And you see the distance between this one and this one is 90 and this one and this one is 900. Whereas these ones it's constant. It's always 1, 1, 1. So that's the difference. And where logarithms come to help it here is that if you have to plot the point 142, well you're like, where do I put that? Like it is changing so much here. Well you can actually use a logarithm to help you plot that point. But I'm not going to go into detail about that. If you want to know more about that, Khan Academy has actually a pretty good video on logarithmic scales. Just type logarithmic scale on YouTube and look for Khan Academy. He has a good video. So I suggest you watch that. Um, for the person that emailed me about this, I hope this answers your question. If not, and anyone else, if the logarithmic videos are a bit confusing, just put a comment, put your question, or tell me what could have been done better, and I'll try making another video. Thanks.